One silver night, the breeze puffed up our tent, so that returning to it, we were stilled and frightened and took cover behind the woodpile and watched the dancing ash and held each other's hands. Sweet and fragrant cold that descends the named mountain to sleep here among the people and never go away. You have done all this, and now the frozen hair atop my head, your mocking cosmic light through cloud and no bird all day. Roger called for another long beach of grasses to be laid before him. And when it was done for pheasants, and when the pheasants had been brought, he called for his gun, which was to be some wood-handled replica of another gun. And when it came, he asked that small, pink-faced children of a northern European variety be placed around it in a semicircle, protecting it and him from the brutish yet kind-hearted thief he had called for earlier, and who had come and lunched and waited in the foreground. And when he asked for the sun and the sun's rays and for the unexplained magic of photosynthesis that would grow the grasses high, he asked also for a hat so that whoever might come looking for him in the tall grasses could, by the sight of the hat, find him. And when this came, he felt relieved, as if that very last thing had been the most sensible. But it was in this exact landscape that the mossy box of bullets sat, a magnifying glass leaned up against it, thinking, wrong, wrong, wrong. No one ever knows what to wish for. Yes, getting dragged by dogs on a sled over an uninhabited ice bank is all I really need. The stars, that quiet time alone, a bunch of diving birds. Each thing was like the open mouth of my cave, and I was as a croquet ball on the endless lawn of a great socialite, taking the perfect journey through every gate, the dropped jaws, the spilled lemontine drinks. My thought then, being so close, was of the pungent earth. I rolled, a magic relief as in the story when one finds oneself lost beneath a canopy of fabulous tropical plants a fever of familiar people. Each day, I imagine the nourishing abstraction of a hot sun. Each night, the constellations distract with proximity. My life at Nettle Abbey was as you might expect. Thrown from one's horse onto someone else's horse was as good as it got. Being the sort who really does appreciate an awkward compliment. I waited there like I might never be woke again. But in no time, I was heard to howl and bemoan my wretched cause. How often might one get water splashed in one's eyes before the salty crust on one's forehead becomes a part of one's expression? I do wish I were not so stubborn for I would much prefer to return home to you and fill that little bowl with milk myself. But my dear, do not be deceived. A hare might think he does fine to find himself asleep a lettuce patch, but it is certainly there where the laziest owners of the laziest hounds do suck their pipes. And so, like my companions, I dream not of the tender head and leaf, but of the spastic dismantling of spirit between the teeth of my enemy. Through God's grace, the little drops came down on your head, and with one sweep of an arm, this earth was cleared. Around my green soul, there was a black circle 
and an ashen world. Fitfully search the faces for what is left and you will see each effect of being ghostly. The blood as it was given by the heart and taken from the arm. The voice if it is only air. I find, as in the animal world, reminiscence disposes so quickly of its architecture so that a leaf in dying might not fall or rot or float down the river, that it might not find itself flattened between the pages of a hymnal. Through God's grace, the little drops came down and the spectacle of human science blabbered on, just waiting for something to witness up close.